This is a working scale model of a hit or miss engine. This is a Red Wing, um, well, the original was a, I think a five horsepower Red Wing engine, and this a stationary engine, and this is a one quarter scale model of it. And, uh, and it runs, and it's super cool. So I thought I would uh, point it, point out some of the, the features and some of the things. So it's got its flywheels in the back, one on each side. It's got a power takeoff pulley on the side there. Although I don't think it generates enough power to really be worth trying to power anything. Um, it's getting its ignition from um, actually an automotive coil and a little computer um, board with a Hall effect sensor. These wires go to a little um, Hall effect sensor with a magnet, which I'll show you that in a, in a second. And then it's running off of a a six volt uh, dry cell battery. And right now I'm running it on um, two stroke fuel. So it gets a little extra lubrication for the piston. And so uh, this oiler has been converted to be a little fuel tank. So yeah, so um, hit or miss engines, if you don't know, they have a, a system of basically holding the exhaust valve open when the speed is high so that the engine just free wheels with no compression. And then as the speed gets lower, as the RPMs get lower, um, it will close the exhaust valve and then fire a combustion stroke and then speed up again and keep going. So every time you hear a little puff is when it's combusting and the rest of the time it's just free wheeling. So here at the front, you've got your cylinder head. You've got a little carburetor here which is really, I think they call it a fuel mixer. It's a little too primitive to be a real carburetor. But there's a little, a little valve on the bottom of it there that you can see kind of hop up and down as it, uh, as it goes. So that little valve, what it does is it's to try to prevent the fuel from just pouring out. I do have some fuel leaks. You can see some fuel kind of collecting on some of the fittings there. But anyways, so when it does its, its intake stroke, it's going to pull some fuel and some air. There's like a little hole. In the, in the front of that there. It's gonna pull some of that up into the cylinder head and compress it and then ignite the ignite it with the spark plug and make the power stroke. And this is your intake valve here. And again, it's just um, got a very lightweight spring on it. And when you see it move in, it's moving in just from the suction of the piston. As the piston is on its intake stroke, it creates enough suction to suck the air and the fuel in from the mixer. And then the exhaust valve, is actuated by this, this rocker arm. So the exhaust valve is being held open and then it closes, fires, and it's held open again. And so this rocker arm is being actuated by the push rod. The push rod is this long rectangular beam that goes all the way up. And there's a little part there called a latch out bar. So the latch out bar, you can see it, it kind of catches on that little piece of metal. And so when it catches on the piece of metal, it holds the push rod in the position to hold that exhaust valve open. And then when it's time to fire, the latch out bar moves aside and the engine fires. And so what's moving the latch out bar is there's a little collar here um, that's connected to the governor so that when the, the speed goes fast, the, the weights, the governor weights, pull that collar outward, which move that latch out bar against the push rod. And then when the speed slows down, those weights move inward, move that collar towards the center of the engine, the latch out bar moves out, and then the push rod actuates. And then we've got these two gears. So we've got the, the smaller gear on the crankshaft and the larger gear is our cam gear. And you can kind of see the lobe of that cam running. Oh, here we go. You can see that cam lobe rubs against that wheel there, that little roller wheel on the end of the push rod. So it's a single lobe cam to actuate the one push rod. And then on this little lever, again, it, it's got a little sensor and on the, the side of that cam gear is a little magnet. And so every time that magnet goes by, the sensor is when it fires the spark plug. And you can actually change the timing, advance the spark or retard the spark by moving the lever there. But it seems to like to be about straight up and down. And then on this little uh, circuit board, you can see the light blink, and that light is blinking every time it's firing the spark plug. But of course, it fires the spark plug every revolution, 
but it only fires, it only ignites fuel, you know, after there's been an intake stroke and then a compression stroke. So even though the spark plug's firing every time, it doesn't correlate with uh, every time that the, the engine actually fires. Like maybe it, I don't know, cycles five or six revolutions before it, uh, or five or six cycles before it actually fires again. So on this flywheel, it's spinning, it's a little hard to see. I'll stop it in a sec so you can see what the counterweights look like, but the counterweights are right there. And you can kind of see they actually, they kind of spread outward a little bit. They're out now, and then they kind of go inward, and out and in. You can see, see that there. You know, it's all exposed. You've got your, uh, your piston, the back of the piston coming out there through a little crankcase. Your connecting rod is all exposed. Your crankshaft is exposed. On top of the cylinder is this water tank, this little hopper full of water. And it's just regular water, and it's, you know, essentially water-cooled, so as it heats the water up in the water, it's, um, it's pretty warm. It's like the temperature of, uh, well, like warm tea. Not hot tea, but warm tea. So, but as that just kind of, you know, if this ran for a really long time, it would kind of evaporate. It would boil and bubble, you know, and, and evaporate off as, as steam or leave as steam and uh, that would, you know, help cool the engine. And then what we have on top here is an oiler. So this you put regular, I put just um, some 30 weight motor oil in there, and there's a little needle valve to adjust it, and the oil drips through that little opening, so you can see it drip, and it drips right down that tube onto the top of the, of the cylinder to oil your piston. So maybe like a piston squirter, this would, is a, a gravity-fed piston squirter, so to speak. So originally this model had the fuel tank in the base, and this little brass fitting was to fill the fuel tank. But again, I don't have that. Um, the previous, or the guy who built this, the previous owner, he um, <coughs> converted uh, an old oiler. He soldered up a little piece of tubing in the drip window um, so that the, the fluid or the fuel could go wouldn't be exposed and could go right to the, the little mixer there. So there you have it. So the Red Wing, Red Wing Motors, this was a kit that I think is still available. Um, it's a kit of castings. You have to machine the castings yourself and then machine a whole bunch of the other parts. And then when you've machined all the parts and put it together, you can get it to run. So there was missing a, a few cycles. So actually, I'm going to turn off the fuel, shut the fuel valve. And so it'll, it'll fire a cycle or two, and then it'll kind of come, come to a stop as it runs out of fuel. There, there it goes. So since <clears throat> fuel starts, so it's running out of fuel. And so now the, the few things I wanted to show you is um, on the connecting rod and also on your on your bearings, there's these little cups. On a, on a full-size engine, these would be grease cups that you'd put grease into and you could, um, uh, as, you, as you turned them, they would squish grease into the, into the bearing and you would, you know, every, I don't know, every few hours of running, turn that grease cup, you know, a half turn or something, it would force more grease down. But I've actually just put um, some kind of thick engine assembly lube in there, some red engine assembly lube, so it can just kind of drip and help lubricate those uh, those main bearings, those crank bearings, and then I've done the same for the. Whoop! I dropped that little cap. I'll put that on in a sec. I've done the same for the the connecting rod one, and then here with the engine stop, you can get a much better look at this counterweight system. So the counterweights are two counterweights with little springs, and they, you know they move together like that, and those counterweights as they move. They move the uh, they move that collar, right? So they move that collar in and out, which then moves that latch out bar, and you can see the gears there and everything. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a cool model. It's it's especially cool because it's functional. Let me get this cat back into place. Come on. I'm right-handed, so a little hard to do left-handed. But uh, let's see if I can. Crack the, uh, the fuel valve a little bit and then give it a uh, rotation here. Let's see if I can get it to fire back up. There we go. 
And there you have it. Hit or miss engine. And again, this would have been representative of engines in the early 1900s, early 20th century. Uh, you know, 1905, 1910, that era, that era. So, but it's just, uh, it's just fun to, to watch it from di different angles and see what's going on. You know, modern engines, you don't really get to see the inside of them in action while they are running. But this one, you can. Here it all is. I hope you enjoyed it.